Hong Ming, welcome to the show. Thank you. Excited Dude, to be um, here. Yeah, I, I, I love what you're up to on TikTok and uh, elsewhere. Um, you are doing like this thing called a joke a day. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I, I like the idea of it. I like the <laughs> fact that you're pumping stuff out. You're finding ways to be creative during this time. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely uh, want to hear a little bit more about that. But just to give people some context, you're a comedian um, out of the Bay Area as well. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me before we hopped on that you were in Chicago before this, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Did you do comedy out there or did you start once you moved out to about the area? Three, about half and half. So I did three years, um, all part-time. So <laughs> in Chicago, three years in Bay Area. So uh, it's Chicago, probably, yeah, one of the most one of the best places to do comedy. So right. I was lucky. So, so many, so many comics from all over the world, uh, the country. Because, you know, yeah. the second city. So, uh, so when I go to open mic, usually 20, 30 people. And a lot of open mic goes to the midnight. And right. since, <laughs> since I work full time, I have kids. So one of the, the starting the memory all I have about doing comedy was waiting like around the midnight to get on. So a lot of time it's like 12 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, dude. And three Isn't that people, three people. <laughs> right. That's so much of what it is, right? It's like mm -hmm. so much of it is just waiting, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you'll be out for five hours and you get five minutes, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you, the rest of the time you're hanging out and just, you know, yeah. um, but it, did you notice a difference, um, between, cause it, like you're right, Chicago is kind of, um, an A city, B city, whatever you want to call it in terms of it's like New York and LA, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, uh, tourists kind of coming through there. It's a hot spot, a lot of great talent. Um, and clearly a lot of stage time too. What, um, What's the change you notice from Bay Area to mm -hmm. Chicago, if any? <laughs> yeah, well, one thing that sur um, surprised me, I know that uh, Bay Area has a lot of Asian uh, population, right? But I, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't realize <laughs> the, the, uh, how many. Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm in tech, so I work in Silicon Valley. Yeah. So, so one thing that uh, actually was... Uh, hits me is now whenever I go out and try to make appointment with somebody, I have to describe myself now. Before in Chicago, I just say, find an Asian guy because I will be the only Asian guy in, 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 in Starbucks. But now right, I have right. to describe myself. <laughs> I yeah. never have to. Like, I wear glasses because <laughs> there will be five Asian guys in the... Who, who are all in Silicon Valley, too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but yeah. in terms of comedy, uh, uh, strangely, that the comic, uh, there's not that many Asian comics, even in Bay Area. That's the mm. surprise part. The population, huge difference. Right. And then the comic composition, not that different. Uh, still, uh, I'll, I'll be, I, I go to open mic here. It, it look a lot like Chicago's, except uh, sure. like, like maybe, maybe 50% more. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, um, yeah, stand up comic is still, uh, that doesn't attract a lot of, uh, um, <clears throat> Asian comic, but you know, you know our <laughs> how yeah, family, yeah, yeah. how much our family will push for this direction, right? So it does right. hold back a lot of people. Like, like 100%. Mo most of my friends, they, <clears throat> they they were just so surprised. Like, uh, this is not something that they see their friends doing. But but I think that's also one thing that we feel lucky because this again going to open mic with 20 other comic, like 15 of them are white male, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they will talk about something about Starbucks. So, <laughs> and, and we, we went out at least, yeah, whenever we talk about any culture background and 
and people listen. People listen. They I, do. I mean, even 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 you don't have the greatest joke, you you, you probably get the most attention. And I think, you're so yeah. right, man. I think you're right about that. I think that just the um, well, it's kind of like what do you do with that attention once mm-hmm. you have it? But I I do agree with you. Um, have you ever noticed that? It, it's hard sometimes to connect with audiences because you're coming at stuff from a, a little more of a cultural perspective mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. Uh, things that maybe, depending on the, like, if the audience isn't as diverse or even if they are mm-hmm. diverse, but they just, mm-hmm. they don't have the same life experience as you do. Um, and obviously it's here, like our job to figure out how to translate mm-hmm. that. But do you, have you encountered that at all? Um, is like, you're not doing yeah. material about Starbucks. Yeah. Probably, probably, yeah, we all have to encounter that, the silence, right? <laughs> After you yeah, yeah. something, the silence. And, and uh, most of the time is they, they are afraid of what to respond, right? Because mm-hmm. people, people, most of the audience, they, they don't want to, if they hear something they don't understand, it, it confused them, and they search in their head whether it's because them or because of us, right? <laughs> so, yes. So, uh, so, but, but, but if we play with that, it's so it's gold, right? It's uh, it's half of my comedy was just playing how dumb I am, right? Like I, I'll tell people like, oh, there's so many things I don't understand, like, uh, 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 like the other day, somebody said to me, "I screen, you screen, you know the rest." I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of like, like, like. Oh, you know something, I don't know something. So, right. So, so that plays a lot. Uh, uh, but but you're right. You you all you have to know how much audience knows about <laughs> your culture, so then play with it. But but generally, I find like as outsider, I think. Uh, Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks says something. Uh, he as a Jewish comedian uh, mm-hmm. living in Brooklyn, and he said that his most uh, helpful tools was being an outsider, because because he was almost like looking at a lot of a com- comedian, a Jewish comedian at that time was kind of living, uh, looking at the U.S. in a outside the point of view, because culturally they are very different. So uh, you know how many <laughs> Jewish <laughs> comedians there yeah. are. So when I listened to that, I was like, wow, like we, like Asian comic, we are looking way even uh, uh, in a different places than Jewish comedian, right? Like, mm-hmm. like, like I, I will be, I was surprised, like, 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 uh, Mel Brook, you're just American kids, right? <laughs> you, right. You grew up. If we grew up like like in uh, America, uh, we are the absolute outsider. So 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 if he dig in anything out, we we should dig much more. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, there's this something. Uh, this comedian, uh, his name's Satoyo. He uh, he said to me when I like first kind of moved back to. Uh, Philly and started doing comedy here and um, you know he's a he's from Nigeria I believe and and Mm -hmm. I remember him saying like you know more about them than they know about you Mm -hmm. and you can use that as an advantage because you grew up like or or some of us like we grew up in a place where it's like oh what's it like Mm -hmm. to go be invited to this party, right? What's it like to have a first sleepover at a white friend's house? Um, what's it like to, like those little moments that we got to experience and it was like totally from an outsider's perspective. Mm-hmm. We also kind of, at this point, have have assimilated a little bit and mm-hmm. figured out how to, like we understand the culture enough that we're like in it. Um, so I, I, I think that you're right, there's some unique point of view there um that anybody i think anything that's a little different about mm-hmm. you and we for us it's yeah. just we happen to be from asia <laughs> so so how's uh, your family response to your choice of <laughs> uh, yeah. comedy, dude well for me um i didn't even tell my parents for mm. for a long time because it just didn't even like 
they 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 wouldn't fully understand it. Like they know what stand up kind of is, mm -hmm. but um, you know, they they don't really, of course, see it as like a career path or mm -hmm. or something that like why would you? Um, the fact that like it's in bars and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of shows are in bars and clubs and nightclubs. Like that alone takes sometimes mm -hmm. um, people in Indian culture, Middle Eastern culture, mm -hmm. a little bit just away from it, turns you off from it a little yeah. bit. And um, so, you know, for a little while, yeah, I just didn't really tell them. It was just kind of something I was, I was doing. Yeah, in and then, closet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I, I, find, I did eventually, you know, I remember telling my dad, um, you know, that I did stand up and I was going to mm -hmm. like, I was going to be putting some energy into it and, and this and that. And uh, he was just like, he texted back. He's like, okay. Mm -hmm. that was it you know what I mean there was no there was no like cool um and and that's cool with me because like I for me maybe it's because with other things I like in the past like I wanted um whatever that is a little bit of like acceptance right mm -hmm. and and whatnot and by the time that I like started comedy and after I guess like the first year or so I didn't really care as so much. I was like they'll 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 join in when mm -hmm. it's time. You know what I mean? Like, um, cause it's not like, yeah. yeah. So their reaction really was kind of nothing like crazy. Like they fully didn't really even understand it. My mm -hmm. mom kind of got it. My mom was like, Oh, my mom was like, you should take these jokes in, um, in Urdu, like our, our language mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She said, and you should translate them into English and tell them. I'm like, mom, that's like stealing jokes. You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> that doesn't apply here. You know, so, um, that's actually yeah, not yeah. a bad idea. <laughs> right. Right. So I, um, yeah, man, that's kind of, I guess how yeah. it's been for me. Uh -huh. It's, it's a little more like just nor, uh, mm. normal. I just don't bring a lot of attention to it, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know. How, how is it for you? What's, I, what's it been like for yeah, your family? We, uh, it's your, uh, parents, like immigrant, like uh, coming yep. at so I so I will be more like your parents. So I mm -hmm. came right after college. So so I formed family here, but I know my yeah. wife in college in China. So Got we, it. yeah. So but our both kids are born here. So so we, we kind of form family here. So uh, my parents will be back in China. Of course, they 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 will support anything I do, and I I went on to. To have my PhD degree in computer science, so I work in tech, and then I I later went to law school because I thought if there's one thing American need, there's another no lawyer, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but right. but actually, yeah, I, I specifically choose law school because computer works the same whether it's in China or in US, but. The, how the society works. Like I can learn so much from law school. So mm -hmm. really appreciate that. But later, a uh, patent attorney become the way to go is my background. So I'm a patent attorney, a good job. So, so then uh, pick up the hobby of uh, comedy. It's almost like a, a personal kind of uh, um, hobby. So, mm -hmm. so my, my wife, uh, my parents, they, they will just support, oh, you pick up a new hobby. <laughs> right, right. But why, my wife will understand to a degree that, oh, that's that's exactly placed into my uh, personal choice. Like people mm -hmm. wouldn't understand why you go to law school. Same thing. People wouldn't understand why you go to do open mic. So he's, she supported right. me just because, oh, that's what he does, some, some mm -hmm. kind of trust. But... With little children, uh, we, it, I remember the first year I do comedy, the agreement, the kind of agreement we have between us will be one night, one night comedy. Yeah, okay. So, so Tuesday night, Tuesday night, I will try to sign up as many as possible. Uh, right. And in Chicago, you're lucky, but still I have to drive like hours back and forth. Mm -hmm. The most I did was four. Nice. 
I, I that's mean, a good night. Yeah, I, I, each has to wait one or two hours. So yeah, I, I'm I'm out of house seven o'clock, back home like one or two o'clock. That's my Tuesday right. night. But but with four open, three three open mic uh, regularly one week, I was able to try most of my joke. If if I can write ten jokes, I have enough stage time to try it out. So yeah. that that year actually give me probably still 80% of all my jokes. Later, I did even less because, because um, one is, I get to try most of my theory in the open mic. Then in Chicago, you getting invited to showcase. Yeah. Like it's, it's very uh, lucky because there's, there's many showcases. So after three months, uh, people, People will approach you like, "Oh, you want to be on my showcase mm-hmm. because they like certain of your jokes." So, so, so after a year, I was able to get on um, showcases. Then I will just pick the showcase. I'll, I'll tell my wife, "Oh, I, I'll do this one showcase in this whole week. That's it. That's mm-hmm. all I want. <laughs> right? yeah, to yeah, make yeah. sure I can I can have the time because that uh, that's not necessary on Tuesday now. <laughs> so, so I right. I end up doing even less." Uh, but but that's how the, the 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 five six years of my doing comedy you you can tell it's 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 not that much but then with full time job and family I'm I'm just lucky I I keep on yeah. doing it I'm so <laughs> so Dude, it's it, not it fits. perfect yeah it fits for you you know what I mean and I think they're like. If there's anything I feel like this past year with the pandemic that it showed was that, like, I don't know if you've had a chance to get back on stage here and there, but mm-hmm. like, I got to go on stage last night and nice. it's not as often, right? It's not like mm-hmm. two, four sets a night and you're doing that four or five nights a week. Like, um, that was the, that was kind of the grind that it's like, mm-hmm. it's, you're, you're, I don't know. That's the norm. It's like you're pressured to dive into that. If you want to be really good, you put in that time, right? Mm-hmm. It's like working out, working out two hours a day. And you're also spending all this time recovering, all this time's going into it. Mm-hmm. But you're right. When you, you, I think like the game is this, you got to figure out how to do it long term and how to do it sustainably. Like mm-hmm. if you want to get good, cause it takes a long time to get yeah. good. It's very slow progress. Mm-hmm. And so you just have to fit. I think the, the key is like just figuring out how to, keep it fitting into your life, mm-hmm. whether that's once a week, four times a week, mm. whatever you got to do to make that happen. And then I, I, I do think there's this thing where this year's made you value the stage time infinitely more. Yeah. So I'm not like just fucking around for three minutes mm-hmm. and then I'm like, Oh, like, let's do some jokes. You know, I don't, I hate, I hate yeah, yeah. that. And yeah. it's like, that, I, I said, um, I hate those, uh, kind of comic that, uh, didn't prepare uh, not, uh, uh, less as a comic. Yeah, because of yeah. a comic more because I'm Asian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, homework. rough. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're like, you should have stayed up extra late last night and woke up early to do this. Um, I feel like it's uh, it's it's disrespectful to the mm-hmm. audience because, like, especially now, it takes effort to get out and go it's outside it's cold sometimes you know like it's um you're do you're sacrificing being with your kids and shit to like be there mm-hmm. right and it's like you're giving people attention like i'm i've always been someone that i try to give my full like attention no matter who it is because you're always like learning a little bit right what mm-hmm. to do or what not to do um and Anyways, I, I just feel like mm-hmm. it's uh, when somebody brings something to the table where it's like, all right, I'm, this is like the intention for tonight. I'm going to work on this. I like that because it's like mm-hmm. I like seeing I like seeing what people are working on. Um, but, yeah, I hate the people who are like they're like riffing for three minutes. And yeah. Like, yeah. All right. Time oh, to do some no jokes, jokes like, tonight. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, man, that's funny. But um, I know what you mean with the with the family thing where it's like. Your parents like just support it because it's like it's something you do, uh, and but 
but your wife really kind of understands it a little more and how it fits into kind of the rest of your life. I'm kind of really lucky, I think, in that sense with my girlfriend. She mm-hmm. under, you know, she gets it. She supports it, all that stuff, which makes it very helpful. Oh, she, she um, go to your show? She was, yeah, she's, okay. she's, she's gone uh, to the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, she actually has even come to a mic uh, okay. once or twice, which, mm-hmm. you know, that can be, that can be a, a gamble, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, how it might go. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's, um, she's supportive. And then it's kind of like, dude, having, what I've realized, man, is like the community aspect of just knowing mm-hmm comedians like and and not like because it's it, it is clicky right and everybody's got their group and who you're with and, and who you get along with who you don't or whatever mm-hmm. but like if you find a couple comics who mm-hmm. you guys just jive well together you're comfortable with, you, with each other um yeah i don't know it makes it, it make like you have people who get it Mm-hmm, right, you mm-hmm. have people who get yeah, the yeah, grind yeah to a lot of people it doesn't i mean of course it doesn't make sense why would you be at a bar with three people, you know, bombing for five minutes and then mm-hmm. go do it again, drive another 30 minutes to do another set mm-hmm. and possibly have that experience. It's like something lunatic, uh, yeah, yeah. about that, that like <laughs> we get, you know, um, that's really cool though. It's, it sounds like you figured out a way to embed it, uh, into your life. Yeah. But, but I, I, the one thing I really don't like is, Uh, it's not for me to comment, comment, but but the whole thing like why the um, comedy just can't be a career, like like mm-hmm. it's it's just not right because uh, I I'm a lawyer right I uh, uh, before that I'm a programmer so I spent like a couple years learning how to code and then I I wrote code for somebody I get paid really well. Uh, and then I now I'm a lawyer. I give people legal advice and do get some document ready. I get paid really well. Yeah. Uh, but I I put in much more hours uh, in comedy. Right, uh, right. It's a full time job. Whenever I delivered my best joke to, no matter how many people, I'm giving a service. I honestly think more valuable than all the mm-hmm. other services. Whether it's my ten lines of code. Or my legal advice. So, so, so the product has value. It, it gives. Yep. It, it makes a hundred people laughing at the same time. But the market just don't give value to to mm-hmm. comics because right. for whatever reason, there's no way you can make a living with the skill yeah. you have. <laughs> And that's what I think. Like that's when like the game kind of becomes sometimes like. You figure out how to fund the comedy, right? How mm-hmm. do you fund like? Because basically, it's like when, at least for me, making money from comedy would look a certain way, right? It'd be like, oh, cool, I'd be getting to tour a little bit, and maybe I'd get to, you know, stay at this hotel, and and little things that are like you have time to, a little more time to think about it, right? Uh, no other shit to worry about, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you can. Create kind of that same thing, like I think comics undervalue how smart they are. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? There's a lot of skill. Like there's so much intellect that's fucking required to do comedy, mm-hmm. even dumb jokes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah. like mm-hmm. you said, to orchestrate a hundred, two hundred, three hundred people to in sync laugh like that for an extended period of time, it's no, it's it's no walk in the park. It's mm-hmm. very difficult. And so, if you can, I feel like if you can apply. Apply some of the skills in some mm-hmm. way to something else, yeah. and you find like businesses who have money and who will pay you willingly. Mm-hmm. It's like it just buys you a little more freedom yeah. to, yeah. you know what I mean? Keep keep kind of keep your craft mm-hmm. going. Um, yeah, I, I I have always been kind of really like I've always struggled with that um, broke artist mindset. Yeah. Because like it's so common, especially in our industry with comedy, it's like that's yeah you're just it, it's it's glamorized a little bit. But it's like for me, I came from a background where in in fitness, and mm. I had put in you know at this point probably ten eleven years, and I've had a little bit of success mm. in that career, and in, and it pays well, and it it keeps it allows me to have a little more control of my time and. 
mm. do comedy. And so, you know, um, I like, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that I have the choice and that there's not this pressure. It makes, it makes it more meaningful, mm-hmm. even if it's like, um, you know what I mean? Even when you do get paid, it's like that money is like, uh, it feels better than all the other. You're like, ah, mm-hmm. oh, this is awesome. It's like a hundred bucks from comedy. This is great. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> rolling in it, you know? Um, well, dude, I wanted to, uh, I want to talk to you about the joke a day thing. Okay. Um, I know we, we started off uh-huh. with that. Um, what, what were you like, how did you come up with that? Was it during this year? Was it a long time ago? And then, yeah, walk me through yeah, it's, how you it's, were like, I mean, this. it's, it's not a great idea. So <laughs> it, 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 it's actually, it, uh, it's actually a bad idea. Okay. Uh, we all know what's our, uh, our like number one hated question. Any non-comic asks us is, oh, you're a comic. Tell me a joke. Like, oh, nobody yeah, likes yeah. that. So right. my joke a day thing is exactly the answer to that question. So. <laughs> oh, nice. I like that. So, uh, but, you like follow my TikTok, asshole. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it start with just a joke. Like I'm, I'm like I know that because uh, 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 I was on Facebook, Instagram, post a joke once in a while, and and with uh, like and on TikTok, you know right away. It's it's silly dance, it's lip sync. <laughs> you put mm-hmm. a joke out, nobody's gonna listen. <laughs> It's just right. the worst place to do comedy. The worst. Uh, Is on you're saying on TikTok. Yeah, t- uh, yeah, I know that already. But then, uh, but if you get a count, uh, what do you do as a comic? Like, like, do you dance to silly music? I don't even dance <laughs> with loud. Yeah, TikTok. me neither. Yeah, so 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 of course the only thing I think of is telling a joke, and then. I, I'm just whatever. That's the only thing I know to do. Then I'll tell yeah. one joke a day. So I literally the first thing, first first TikTok I post out is joke number one, and then I just keep going. And doesn't matter if anybody listen or not. This is the joke I like. I, I mm-hmm. uh, so so, but but the result. I mean, of course, whenever we tell a joke we we actually we hope as 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 much applause we get as possible <laughs> that's, that's right comic so so when 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 people starting to follow and less so from zero followers one joke and then uh more and more build up and and believe it or not uh i have 50 Okay, right now, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was gonna say it's like you were like saying com- it's it's not a good place for comedy, but I'm like, dude, don't you have like a million likes or something already? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But <laughs> but then I did like a hundred days, so so okay. that's one thing uh, 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 funny to myself too, because uh, you know how our routine doesn't translate to individual joke. No, uh, uh, no, yeah, yeah it's. The act is a different because you can't thing pick pick, pick your best joke up because your best joke probably takes two minutes. It's it's right. a, it's a bit. So yep. so TikTok is one minute, one minute mm-hmm. limit. So <laughs> so so it's I have to like like transform my joke, long joke into short joke to to make it work. So end up uh, the best joke works the 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 least like like my best joke nobody understand like it comes from a longer place and then silly joke so this is the the one that gets one million like is a joke you, you're gonna laugh it's like somebody asks uh uh what's your fake name in starbucks and my answer is ching chong of course that gets one that million likes. Million. That's amazing, man. <laughs> anyway, Dude. anyway, they, they, uh, I appreciate any audience. Like I appreciate, and some audience yeah. they let me know like why they like the joke. I, I mean, it's, yeah. it's so 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 that's why uh, I I I actually taking it serious. 
uh, like from the from the get go, I just want the best joke to reach the most people. That's all I want. But then uh, after a hundred days, I don't have that many jokes. So <laughs> yeah. So I starting to ask my comic friends, you you should do one. I, I'll I'll approach you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just I'd love to. A clip. But then I realized uh, half of my friends would say, no, 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 no. It's it's not a good place. I understand because because oh, we, we, on stage we are kind of in control. Like mm-hmm. We can face a thousand audience, no problem. We know how to grab your attention. We know how to keep you uh, in suspense and then hit you with a punchline. Feels really good. But to tell a joke on TikTok for one minute, it feels like answer the question. Oh, you're a comic. Tell me a joke. Yeah. You know there's no good result coming from that. So so right. a lot of comics think they're smart. They're smart. They, they know that's not the best way to present themselves. So I understand. So I, I'll, I'll send out like 10 request to my friends and five of them will just say oh <laughs> not for me <laughs> and right. three of them will will say oh i'll do it and then forget about it <laughs> and one or two <laughs> yeah. will, will send me a click and say oh is that good oh, of course <laughs> uh, so so i uh, i might keep on posting for a while and then when i have no clip and i have no jokes and then it will just be like that so, so yeah so Dude, okay, so I really love, like, I have some more ideas and I want to bounce them back with you on this topic. Let's, uh, people can listen to the Pure Red Weirdo episode, Mm because you're going to be on there and we're going to continue this conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, But I want to just thank you for coming on the show. Um, It was really fun to just, yeah, talk comedy and, and, uh, yeah, man, um, I, I, I love what you're doing. And it was, it's super interesting also to just get to, um, yeah, like bounce what it's like for other Asian comedians. You know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, everybody's got it. You know, we have some similarities in terms mm-hmm. of the stuff we deal with, but um, you know, everybody's got their unique experience. So, thanks for coming on and sharing. Thank you. Yeah, tell me uh, where can we point people to? Uh, where can oh, they yeah. follow along with so the joke of the, day and the all that good stuff? TikTok, if people can remember, is my name at Hongming Liu. H O N G M I N G. L I U eleven. So the whole okay, thing wait. Dot dot, dot L I U eleven. Yeah. Uh, Got it. And are mm-hmm. are you on Instagram and stuff too, or is TikTok yeah, the main Inst- place? Yeah, uh, TikTok end up the main place. So great. So I I put Instagram there so, uh, before I I wasn't using a lot of uh, social network. Have <laughs> no Dude, time. Great. <laughs> What a great place to have your first one, right? Is start on TikTok. Uh, it's it, I have to give to the platform. It's uh, my analogy is uh, it's a, a amusement park. Like a lot of <laughs> people coming, but then the main attraction is the silly dance. It's, it's the music. Uh, yeah, yeah. But then this in the corner, they give you a little space to perform. Like, like my account. Dude, it's I like place. that. Yeah. yeah. Still, this lingering audience just passing by and see me perform. Why not? Like, if you are giving right. a spot in Disneyland, will you not take it? Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and then if if you are good, yeah, those people who are coming back to you, even if it's in a corner, then why not? Yeah, they're like, oh, I saw this guy at the amusement park. He's performing on a cruise. Let's go on a cruise, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you never know um, who you might, you know, attract mm-hmm. that way. That's really cool. Um, I love I love that description. Let's continue this conversation mm-hmm. on Purebred Weirdo. Um, okay. Again, Hongming, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.